Hello everyone. There are 2000 file topics and I am going to make you the champion. Each topic just needs five minutes revision. There are about uh, 10 to 20 points, file facts that you need to do the revision. So, shuru karenge. Let us start with capnography, most disgusting dry topic in the entire anesthesiology and the neat PG preparation. So, I give you a uh, mind map, right? So, for you to do the quick revision. So, what are the 10 points about capnography? First of all, what is capnometry? The measurement of the carbon dioxide in the expired gas is called capnometry. So you are doing basically a graphical recording of the carbon dioxide concentration versus time. That is called as capnography. By a capnography may kitna phases hota hai. So this is the graph. Phase one, phase two, phase three. So what is phase one? Phase one is called the inspiratory phase. It is the baseline. It begins at the start of inspiration, right? This is inspiratory phase, which is the phase one. At this point of time, the carbon dioxide partial pressure need to be zero millimeters mercury. That's the reason it is in the baseline. And normally it is zero carbon dioxide partial pressure, reflecting that the expired gases are coming from the respiratory dead space. Then what is phase two? Phase two is called the expiratory upstroke. Phase three is called alveolar plateau. Phase after that, there is an inspiratory downstroke. So this is how you have between phase two and phase three, by alpha angle hota hai between the between the alveolar plateau and the phase zero. Typically, you have the beta angle. Until here, you understood, right? So phase two is the expiratory upstroke. It is a rapid S-shaped upswing and it is a transition between respiratory dead space and the alveolar gas. So you should know that there is a baseline during inspiration, then expiratory upstroke, then there is a alveolar plateau. Then what is phase three? Phase three is called the plateau phase, alveolar plateau phase. And here all the gas is coming from the alveoli. And uh, typically, this phase three, the plateau phase, will end at the end tidal point with the maximum carbon dioxide concentration. So that's the reason the end of the alveolar plateau we call end tidal carbon dioxide, and this is called the beta angle. So please don't forget. Then, additionally, there is a phase four. It is only seen in pregnancy and it is a terminal upstroke before the phase zero. Before the phase zero, there will be one terminal upstroke in the case of the pregnant woman, which is called as the phase four is what you should remember. Achha, what is alpha angle? Alpha angle is between the phase one and phase two. Normally, it is 100 to 110 degrees. And between the end of the phase three and the descending limb, you have the beta angle. Normally, it is around 90 degrees. These are the facts that you need to remember. So let us take one MCQ quickly. How an examiner can ask a question. A 28-year-old pregnant woman is undergoing routine antenatal care. So the clinician notes an additional phase in the capnogram, which is not typically seen in the non-pregnant women, but only in pregnant women, which, which, which one it is? It is the terminal upstroke before the phase zero is the one which is typically seen 
in the pregnancy is what you need to remember. Now, quickly, let us revise what are the deviations from the normal capnogram. You are going to get one mark into your pocket. That's the reason B. Well motivated to remember all this crap and shit until the need PG. After that, you forget it. Because tomorrow, if you're a cardiologist, why do you need this? Unless you're an anesthesiologist, you don't need, right? So deviation from the normal capnogram. So let us see. There is something called curare cleft. Curare cleft. You can see the cleft, right? So this is called curare cleft. It occurs in the controlled ventilation with the spontaneous respiratory activity, usually in the later, later third part of the capnogram. It indicates that the muscle relaxant is wearing off, right? Then, what is biphasic capnogram? There are two peaks. It's called biphasic. It can be because of a unilateral hypoventilation, unilateral high airway pressure, or a single lung transplantation, or an endobronchial intubation. Endotracheal intubation. Suppose if you move the endotracheal tube a little inside, it becomes endobronchial. That is almost like an obstruction. There also you get biphasic capnogram. So really severe kyphoscoliosis. You get the biphasic capnogram. That is what you need to remember. Then the next important thing is called camel hump shape of the capnogram. It indicates there is a rebreathing of the mixed gas, that is fresh gas and annular gas. It is very typical of the maple sun D. D for camel, not C for camel. D for camel in controlled ventilation. All right. Then in a maple sun A system, Typically, you get whenever there is any malfunctioning, inspiratory, unidirectional valve, then you get a capnogram with an increased beta angle, which is very characteristic in case of the rebreathing during the control ventilation. Similarly, whenever there is any airway obstruction, like mechanical obstruction, like Tracheal tube kinking, blockage with secretions, or if there is any foreign body, or bronchial asthma, or COPD, any obstruction, airway obstruction, lead to what is typically called increased alpha angle and also increased beta angle, both more than 90 degrees is what you need to remember. Then, if there is any bronchospasm, or rebreathing or air trapping, then there is a loss of alpha angle and never the capnogram touches the baseline. And what is this called? This is called as the shark fin appearance. Shark fin appearance of the capnogram is, clap is typical of the bronchospasm and rebreathing or air trapping. So any exhausted CO2 absorber, that is sodalime in the circuit is exhausted or any malfunctioning expiratory valve or extremely low flow of the fresh gas, then you get shark fin appearance is what you need to remember. So this is all the story, doctor, you need to remember. Keep following me on the YouTube channel. Tell all your friends also. I'll create one... Uh, quick uh, playlist of these 2000 topics. Each topic, high yield topic, you need to remember 15 to 20 points. And all these mind maps, they're all made available at the ebook of the PDFs on the learnograph.com. Good luck and be motivated. And dream that you are going to become the topper in the NEET PG in the top thousand ranks with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, your classmate, roommate, benchmate, table mate, holding your hand until you get the seat in PG Medical Entrance.